the great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit, where Lady Ada uses all her powers of engineering and searching for parts to help you find that part that you need, especially when the rug gets yanked out underneath you and your bomb cost goes up That's thousand right. percent. Uh, yeah, not well, not thousand, but uh, you know, a bunch. Um, so we just we were just chatting about uh, the LSM nine DS one. I thought this was interesting. We wrote about it. The price, the official price of this chip. Not only is it you can't buy this chip, but the official price went from about four dollars to about twenty dollars. Um, and one of our back orders, you know, um, not from Digi but from another distributor um, that we had placed months ago, basically got canceled because it was like, well, we're not going to sell it to you at the original price. You have to replace it with this new price. And um, so I thought if there's people who are using this chip, um, look, I like the LSM 9DS1. It's, it's one, I've used it. It's wonderful. Um, I use the LSM 9DSO. I love all the ST jars and accelerometers I am used. But if you have a board and you are specking this part at about 3 to $4, and now it's coming back to you at $20, um, that can really, really mess your bill of materials, right? If you're selling you know, a, a gaming thing and it had accelerometer in it, you know, motion sensor, and suddenly the bill of materials cost just went up $15, um, that could easily double the cost of your um, product. And so I thought, um, you know, I think eventually the price will come back down because I, I don't think this is competitive at this price. Um, however, uh, until that happens, let's, let's see, you know, some alternatives for nine DOF sensors I want to show people. Cause I had actually had somebody ask me like, what would you use instead? And I was like, that's a good idea for the great search. Um, however, I'm not going to make the, that name public. So that's why there's no quote. Yeah. <laughs> Something behind the scenes. Um, okay. So one of the nice things about the LSM 9DS1 is it's a nine axis. It's accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer. It also says temperature, which technically would mean 10 DOF, but like temperature is really easy to get. So, you know, we're, we're looking at a 9 DOF sensor, which means you get 3 degree magnetometer, 3 degree accelerometer, 3 degree gyro. When you're specking 9 DOF sensors, and you're, you're almost always specking 9 DOF sensors because you want to do an orientation IMU type thing, there's basically like two kinds of systems chips that you want to use first off there's not they're not like one it's not one chip inside it's actually going to be like two or three chips that are kind of uh tied together all on i squared c or with spi um so in the lsm 9 ds1 i don't remember exactly the two parts but it's basically i think it's like an lsm 303 plus um something else it's, it's basically either an accelerometer plus gyro and then a separate magnetometer i think maybe say a lit an lsm 2 mdl or 3 mdl tied with an lsm 330 or something it's it's two chips inside and they're just packaged into one little chip which is quite nice it's very uh nicely uh and compact um these chips they have things like filters and fifos however they're going to give you raw accelerometer gyroscope and magnetometer data and then you're sort of expected to take uh, an AHRS um, fusion algorithm, you take that data and you, you combine, I think ST probably even gives you libraries, to combine that data to give you orientation in like quaternions or something. And um, there are also chips out there on the market like the BNO 055, BNO 085, and those chips are 9 DOF sensors, but they also have a little fusion chip inside of them that does that calculation. So why, you know, why would you care like which one you use. Well, first off, um, there's price. So if you're getting, you know, a, a BNO 055, well, now it's going to be about the same price as a, as a LSM 90S1. But in general, if you have a chip that's doing the fusion algorithm for you, you're going to pay a little bit more because there's this second chip that takes the sensor data and fuses it together to pipe out, you know, quaternion orientation data. So there's um, like a little microcontroller in there? Yeah, there's like a Lugia Cortex-M0. I think the BNO... 055 and 085, those are actually two different companies, although the part number is very similar. Uh, one's Hillcrest Siva and one is something else I don't remember. And um, those have a SAM D21 actually inside uh, also. So there's like actually like now three chips inside tied together. It's like our TI calculator that runs Python yeah, they at a SAMD. There's a SAMD. Yeah. So you can get, the, look, here's the thing. You can't get those chips right now anyways. But yeah, so they're going to be more expensive. The B&Os are also like... Totally unavailable. In fact, I think if you search on on DigiKey for the BNO 
I think they're like, we don't even have a time in which these might be available. Yeah, like you can't even accept. <laughs> I've never seen that. There's yeah. not even an estimate. Wow. Yeah, which is really cool. Well, due to temporary constraints supply, DigiKey is unable to accept back orders at the time. Not only is there no back orders, but there's no time it's going to be back, no prices. We're just going to pretend this never happened. Yeah, wow. this, this basically, there's, they don't even have the price. Because again, they don't, like, they don't even know. They don't want to say, they never want anyone to say, hey, look, why'd the price change? I, I, no, I, no, I don't know. I don't know yeah. why they did it. They're, I no, think that they I, really I, do not know when I, it's going to be. Itself. I wouldn't keep the price on it, and I wouldn't put any. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't yeah. put any time or date right now because yeah. every, everyone. I think they're like to... we don't even want to accept the order to, yeah. to carry the risk of like what what's going to happen. Who knows? Maybe this it could yeah. be it could be many years, and they don't want to hold that order. <laughs> it's a ghost town. It's, so um, <laughs> so those chips are you know they're very specialty and those go fast. There's also sometimes you can get external chips that are like fusion chips and they'll. They'll do the work for you, um, but yeah. So the the, the B and Ls are they're kind of famous for like they do um, all the work for you running this algorithm. You know, again, you can you can write you can code the algorithm in. We have a, a tutorial here on how to run AHRS on a microcontroller, but you do have to have a microcontroller kind of constantly pulling the data, and you can't uh, you know you can't miss any data. Right, you have to be very consistent because you'll you'll start to um, skew a little bit you start to get yaw from from missing data so you have to be like you know every 50 hertz or whatever on the dot you have to get the data um so if you can't get these you know again you can always do it yourself by combining accelerometer magnetometer and gyroscope um of those you want a pretty good magnetometer but honestly there's a lot of good magnetometers as long as it's got you know a good you know it's got a uh, range and it isn't affected too much by external magnetic fields Magnetometer, I'm not too worried about. Magnetometers, we're, we're pretty good at. Accelerometers, also, we're, we really figured out MEMS accelerometers. Like, everyone's got an accelerometer now. We're pretty good at it. Um, you know, you, you can use it to do tilt and, and motion. The, the part that's really going to dictate whether you get good sensor data out is going to be the gyroscope. The gyroscope is what has drift. You don't have drift in anything else. The gyroscope is the only thing that, like, it'll, it'll, it'll have offset that will... Add accumulate accumulate error on your algorithm, and so we do have an article. Check out um, comparing gyroscope data sheets, and and you can look at some of the gyroscopes. NXP has really great uh, gyroscopes as well. They, I think they've discontinued them though. I mean, like it's it's one of those things where it's like here's a great great sensor, no longer available. Here's another great sensor, no longer available. Um, but you can piece together if you can't get one of these, you can piece together an accelerometer, gyroscope. Those are usually sold in a set, you know and then separately um, a magnetometer. They do not have to be from the same company. They can be separate companies, whatever, uh, distributors, and then you convert them to SI units and then plug them into the AHRS algorithm uh, to get orientation data. Um, that said, let's look, you know, there's really only one option, but let's look at what we can get. Now, nothing's in stock, but I can show you what I would recommend. There's only one option. Is that technically an option or is that how do you describe when there's one? Yeah. It's not a choice. Maybe it is an option because the option is either buy it or don't. Yeah. So if you <laughs> search for, uh, for example, in stock IMU chips, which I think is anything with an excel, at least one accelerometer and gyroscope, um, there's really slim pickings, yeah. um, and oh, the prices yeah. are are quite quite high. Um, I think just the, the, the demand is, is, is really high right now. But uh, a lot of these are, are modules, and they get, they get very expensive very quickly because these are, you know, you get into, like, these industrial IMUs. It's like a car. I mean, like, you know, bill of material and the cost of cars. I mean, these are used in robot. The problem is that yeah. they're used in, like, Wii's and, like, Switch game controls, and they're used in, like, industrial robotics and automotive, right? These, yeah. these are sensors that are they're so popular that... The, every, like everyone's competing because everyone wants um, the in the beginning part. of the pandemic no one was saying hey when, when this is a year later we're going to have a chip shortage like that wasn't one of the things you know it was like quick stock up on toilet paper yeah <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so, so let's not look at stuff in stock because uh, you know, we're, we're going to be disappointed um, however let's look at uh, surface mount components and uh, let's look at active. So at least, you know, when they do, you know, it will likely come back into stock. And then um, if, you, if you're one of the, if you want something that's a more close size comparison uh, to the LSM 90S1, you want nine axis. So let's pick, I don't know why it says 
gyroscope 9 axis, but I'll, I'll click it anyways. But we definitely want gyro and magnetometer and accelerometer. So let's see what's available. And um, today you can see the, the B&O 085. Oh, these you could at least maybe back order. Um, again, these are the ones that have the, the B&O 080 and 085, which are almost identical. There's one is a little bit, the one fixes a little bit of an SPI bug. Um, those are available. Um, then there's the, the LSM 9 DS1 that we referred to. And then after that, there's a lot of modules. So these are like, you, know, you can tell this is, it's not a true nine DOF sensor. It's like five sensors, you know, put together. It's like accelerometer, magnetometer, gyroscope, put together on a board. Um, but if you want it all in one, I would actually recommend going with the ICM uh, 2948. This sensor also can do its own um, fusion algorithm inside. I believe it's under NDA, you might have to sign NDA, or you might have to download the binary blob and, and compile it in. But um, I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but I, I, I know that um, InvenSense, which is now TDK, um, they make very good 9 DOF sensors. Um, they were used in Nintendo and Apple products before um, Nintendo and Apple both, I think, changed over to uh, ST, uh, which means InvenSense got like half their business taken away. Um, but it doesn't mean that they're not good sensors. They're very, very good sensors. Um, they're just, you know, they didn't win in a gigantic fight between elephants, right? Which is which is how it goes when you're a small company. Good news though is um, the price isn't bad, right? Like once you get to, um, you know, 100 pieces or 500 pieces, the price is down to, to $4, $4.50. Um, so it's it's much, much closer to what, where the LSM 9DS1 was. Like you can actually get it at a price that's comparable. If you design the LSM 9DS1 into something and you're like, I just need something that's about the same size, same functionality, I squared C can give me nine DOF IMU data out, um, whether or not you use this motion plus fusion thing, um, this would be a good alternative. It's not pin compatible and it's definitely not firmware compatible, but it's I squared C and you give it some power. I think it might be 1.8 volt, but you know, maybe you could put a level shifter on there and um, I would recommend, I would recommend this chip. Um, I use it, we have a breakout for it, and it's, it's quite easy to use and it's pretty reliable. You can use our, you can use our libraries to get your uh, design kickstarted as well. And while I don't know 100% that this is true, uh, it does say that there's gonna be at least 1,000 in stock, whoops, in September, if you, if you type in a quantity. It says estimate That's September. Nice. So, you have a shot of actually getting these. So that's that's where we're at as engineers, just praying, <laughs> hoping. Yeah. You know, I would have guessed that we'd run out of certain um, elements on the planet. Like, hey, we're out of lithium, everybody. We're going to have to deal with that. We're not uh, we're not there yet, but this yeah. uh, this is this is reminding me of a of all the futures that we're going to have. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. Pandemic dystopia. What's the end result? Well, you're out of chips. All right, that's the great search. <laughs> <laughs> All right, check it out the ice. <laughs>